Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the game where you'll be rewarded for knowing the obscure rather than the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Jacob, and this is my dad, Mark, and we're both from Hertfordshire. Couple number two. Hello, I'm Marissa, and this is my husband, David, and we're from Woodley near Reading. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Alan, this is my mum, Sam, and we're from Manchester. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Olivia, I'm from Derby, and this is my boyfriend, Caleb, and he's from Nottingham. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Very warm welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce, here to roast our contestants like a gastro pub chef at 11 a.m. on a Sunday. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya, hey, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, slash early evening, uh, as I always say. Uh, Marissa and David, back for your third show, so fingers crossed. Final chance now to get through and play for that jackpot. Round one and round two so far. Alan and Sam, round one last time, but lovely to have you back. Uh, final podium, though, Caleb and Olivia all the way through to head-to-head -to -head yeah. on their first show. Um, but they played against Catherine and Julie, and they did quite spectacularly, I would say, in oh, the jackpot they round. Did. They absolutely aced it. They went through to the final three pointless answers. So, yeah, they very much took that jackpot home. So today's jackpot starts off back at £1,000. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. <laughs> now, just remember, it will always be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. So your easy way of not getting eliminated is just to keep your scores low. Simple as that. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Famous people. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question concerns... Time Magazine's Women of the Year. Richard. Yeah, I'm going to show you 16 faces now of women who are on that list from Time Magazine who picked a Woman of the Year uh, every year from 1920 onwards. So who are these people, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, so we're going to put this image up, as Richard says, and it will stay there for the whole round. We won't be changing halfway through the round. Here it comes. You just have to shout out the name of anyone you recognise from this image. Here they all are, 16 of them. Women of the year. Just give you a second to absorb them. There we are. Mark, welcome here from Hertfordshire. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm Mark... And uh, Jacob's dad, obviously. Um, I'm retired. I used to be a postman. Uh, actually, a postman for 39 years. 39? All in the same same area? Same area. Same postcode? They couldn't get rid of me. Oh, yep. that's lovely, though. So everyone got to know you. You got yes. to know everyone. Yep. Lovely job. Really lovely. lovely job. How long ago did you stop? Um, last year. Oh, really? Yeah, it's only recent. Yeah. Wow. Do you miss it? Uh, bits of it. Bits of it. Bits yeah. Of it. yeah. At what time yeah. do you have to be up in the morning? Oh, it's later now. Don't, oh, don't start till 7 o'clock, quarter to 7 now. Oh, that's not so bad. Still quite early. Used to be about half four, so I yeah. used to love it. Yeah, there we go. OK, now, Mark, who are you going to go for on our board? Um, there's... Oh. I'm going I'm to have to go for... Jackie Onassis, is it? Jackie Onassis, says Mark. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jackie Onassis. Jackie Onassis is absolutely right. That goes down to 35. Good start to the round. Yeah, yeah very well played. We've got it down as, uh, as Jackie Kennedy, but, yeah, Jackie Onassis, Jackie Kennedy, Bouvier. Jacqueline Bouvier. Yeah, absolutely yep. right. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Marissa, welcome back. Thank you. So, round two last time. Got to be hoping to take it further, surely, to the head-to-head. -head. Uh, now, tell us all about yourself. OK, so um, I'm Marissa and I work at the Henley Business School at the University of Reading. In the entrepreneur department. How many of you are there to discussing entrepreneurship? Oh, there's quite a few of us. There's about, I think, about ten in it's the team. a little concern you've got going there. <laughs> yeah, there's quite, there's quite a lot of us. But uh, ranging, talking about all different types of entrepreneurship across the centuries. Very good indeed. But you can tell Marissa is a good entrepreneur because she always says the exact name of the of, of where she works as well. Yes. It's all advertising, yeah. isn't it? It's marketing. Branding, yeah. First, yeah. simplest trick in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Marissa, who are you going to go for? I'm going to go for Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg says Marissa. Let's see how many of our 100 people spotted Greta. 
Greta Thunberg, absolutely right. 35 is the only score we have at the moment. And you pass it, 29, for Greta Thunberg. Yeah, the person of the year from 2019, according to Time magazine. She's got a stamp uh, now, Greta Thunberg, in Sweden, though, so it wouldn't Everyone's have... Everyone's got to have a stamp. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Sam, Hi. welcome back to Pointless. Thank you. Tell us all about yourself. So I'm Sam, like Alan said, from Manchester, originally from Birmingham, uh, and spent quite a bit of time in South Africa setting up a, a college. Where were you in South Africa? Um, in a place called Shoshonguve. Wow. How long were you there? Um, about... Ten weeks. I, I thought you could say ten years. I was no, going to say I about ten years. You set up that college in record time. It was already there. We I just see. Went you went in out and to get told them, showed them what to do. Okay. What was your department? What's your um, speciality? Chemistry. Chemistry. I see. Okay. Very good indeed. Sam, who are you going to go for on our board? Oh, um, struggling. Um, I think I'm going to go for Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel, says Sam. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Sam. Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel is right. 35 is our high score, 29 is our low. 47 is where Angela Merkel gets you. Yeah, first female Chancellor of Germany took up that post in 2005. Time Magazine's Woman of the Year for 2015. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Caleb, welcome back. Good to have you with us once more. Um, tell us more about Caleb. Uh, well, so uh, I'm a health psychology student at King's at the minute, and most of my free time at the minute has been spent uh, amateurly, like, fermenting and pickling foods. Oh, that's exciting. Have you got one of those exciting um, jars with, uh, where you, you, you seal it at the top with Oh, yeah, water. we've got, like, some a fermentation jars. They sort of, like, burn What are they called? Ferment fermentation jars. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you make some, you, you, you make some sauerkrauts and exciting... Oh, lots of krauts. Kimchis and Dude, like any that. sort of vegetable, really. I've got some oh. um, uh, carrot kraut going at the minute. It's quite good. Ah. Oh. My mouth's actually watering. That's really weird. <laughs> there would have been a time I wouldn't have imagined sauerkraut would make my mouth water. Um, anyway, there we go. Caleb, the board. The Women board. of the year. Uh, OK, so there's a few that I know on there. Um, so you've got Princess Diana. Uh, oh, don't go to you. We, uh, this board stays up for the whole round. Oh, OK. I, didn't, I did not say. Fill in the blanks. I'm so sorry. I have to take your first answer, Caleb. I'm okay. so sorry. Oh, Olivia, there's a slight burden on your shoulders there. Diana, Princess of Wales, uh, let us see. Princess Diana, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. She's right. I'm sorry. 84, Caleb. You know, she was the first English woman to marry an heir to the throne for 300 years. Whoa. It's a good fact, isn't it? There you go. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Well, we are halfway through this round. Uh, let's have a look at those scores. 29, the best score of the past. Marissa, hats off to you. Very well done indeed. 35 is where we find Mark and Jacob, 47, Sam and Alan, then up to 84, Caleb and Olivia. I'm sorry, yes, that's a high score and probably not the score you were after. <laughs> Olivia, a little bit of a burden for you, a bit of a hill to climb, but I'm sure you can do it. Good luck with that. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK. Olivia, welcome <laughs> back. Um, <laughs> lovely to have you with us again. Tell us more about yourself, Olivia. Uh, yeah, so I'm currently interning at an engineering consultancy firm and kind of, like, in my spare time, I do a bit of running. Um, I've recently started knitting, so that's, like, I'm big into that at the moment, yeah. Most ambitious thing you've made? A hat. <laughs> See, that's good. Very <laughs> deeply practical, though, a hat. Yeah. You're actually genuinely glad of that. I'm getting the basics first and then working my way up. It's the best way to start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> best way to start. Um, Olivia, you are on 84. You're our high scorers. Um, who are you going to pick? And I, you don't need me to tell you, <clears throat> go low. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm struggling with the board, to be honest. Um, I, think, I think this is her full name. Um, I'm going to go with... M M oh, I forgot her name. Um... But I'll, I'll go for Frida Kahlo. I've, I've drawn a okay. blank on the name. Frida Kahlo. Yeah. Frida Kahlo says, Olivia, let's see how many of our 100 people said Frida Kahlo. There's no red line for you as you're the high scorers. Frida Kahlo is absolutely right. It's just what we needed, Olivia. Well done. Nine. That's a perfect answer. It makes your total up to 93. Uh, yeah, full name Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon. Uh, Artist, of course. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Alan, welcome back. Great to have you, you here from Manchester. Tell us more about Alan. 
so currently I'm studying my A-levels, hoping to go to university, uh, but also I'm going to dye my hair pink and raise some money for breast cancer research. Good for you. Any particular shade of pink you've gone for? Uh, brighter, brighter the better. OK, very good. Good luck with that. Um, Alan, you're on 47. If you can possibly score 45 or less, there is a place for you in round two. Um, so I don't know many, uh, but the one I'm going to go for is Malala Yousafzai. Malala Yousafzai, says Alan. OK, here is your red line. Let's see if you can get below this red line with Malala Yousafzai. Malala Yousafzai is absolutely right. There she is on the board. You are through to round two. And that is a lovely low score. Look at that, Alan, down to one, taking your total up to 48. Yeah, she won the Nobel Peace Prize at the age of 17. She was in a chemistry lesson when uh, she found out. She went to university with my daughter. That's quite high pressure. It's quite personal. Yeah. Someone, is, someone that you go to university with who's already won a Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, your swimming yeah. certificate does not look so good next to that. <laughs> no. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Now, David. Hi. Welcome back. Third and final attempt. Thank you. At the Pointless Summit. Now, uh, David, tell us more about yourself. So, I'm a fitness manager at a day spa in the local area, and we're also parents to a beautiful baby boy, Theo, who's nearly two. Very lovely. Very lovely. What sort of things do you get up to uh, when the fitness is done? Well, I'm really into sports, so tennis is my favourite. Um, I've been fortunate enough to go to all four Grand Slams live. That's one of my great achievements. Oh, that's yes. fun. So that's great fun. Melbourne, Paris, London, New York. That's fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. OK, now, David, you're on 29. 63 or less gets you through. OK. Um, there's four on the board that I'm sure of. Uh, it's just picking which one of those four is going to be less. I'm going to go for Beyonce Knowles. Beyonce Knowles, says David. OK, here is your red line. Can you get below that with Beyonce Knowles? Yes, you can. Down goes to 41. Takes your total up to a lovely round 70. Yeah, well done. I think, Marissa, you used Beyonce as an answer on the last show as well. Yeah. So she's, uh, she's doing an awful lot of good. <laughs> she lives in a castle. I would. Beyonce Castle. <laughs> Thanks. That's good. Thank That's you. good. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Jacob. Hello. Welcome to Point. It's good to have you. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I am a canine massage therapist from Whoa, Hertfordshire. stop right there. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's a first, isn't it? A canine massage therapist. That's it, yeah. Um, so, do, yeah, who, who comes in, generally? I mean, dogs, obviously, but... It's, it's for whatever you would have a massage for when you're a human, it's the same for a dog. So, most likely, it's a case of they've come in from after an operation or something like that. So, it's physiotherapy for dogs, yeah, basically? pretty much, yeah. Do you have a, a massage bed with a dog-shaped, dog-shaped <laughs> uh, face hole? I wish. I wish. Oh, oh. So, they can put their ears through. <laughs> 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 they never quite know what to do with their front paws. They put them up there or down there. Oh. Wow. You know what? I thought I'd heard it all. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Brilliant. What a lovely job. Jacob, 35 is the score you're on at the moment. 57 or less gets you into round two. OK, so... You can talk us through the board if you like. Sorry, Caleb. Yeah. That's a... I, I feel like I knew the same four as before. Uh, but I was going to go for Beyonce, but that's been taken. So I'm going to have to go for Michelle Obama. It's not great for me. OK, Michelle Obama. Right, Michelle Obama. There could be something riding on this for Olivia and Caleb, depending on scores. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Michelle Obama. Here's your red line. It's right. You are through. Takes you down to 47. There we are. 82 is your total, and you are through. Very well played. Um, shall we go through the rest of this board? I know yes. there's going to be some stuff you do struggle with, so please just raise a hand if you want to answer any of them. OK. Um, top left. Indira Gand. Absolutely. She would have scored 15. The next lady, former president of Liberia, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, uh, as a pointless answer. So very well done if you said that. Next to her. Another of our big scorers, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Let's see what she scored. 82. That's a big score. Um, now, this next lady, you definitely would have heard of her. Yeah, that's Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart would have scored you four. Um, next row down. Is, uh, Miss Thatcher, Maggie yep, Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher, 79. It's Margaret Thatcher. Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin. 
So you would have scored you 14. Uh, this next one, again, the last two are pointless answers. This is a lady you would have definitely heard of. Um, Coco Chanel. There you go. Uh, that's you the go. one. Pointless answer. That's well done if you said that. Uh, and the US credit campaigner, Lindy Boggs, is the other pointless answer. They're very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our first round. I'm afraid that's where we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. Caleb and Olivia, luckily you're back for a third show. I'm sorry about that. That I know perfectly well that you would probably be staying with us. I don't know. Um, I'm sure we had a better answer than that. But anyway, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank, anyway, thank you very much indeed, Olivia and Caleb. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. Very well done, everybody. Here we are in round two. Alan, you were our lowest individual scorer in that round, so hats off to you. In fact, Alan and Sam are our lowest combined scorers, so uh, very well played on that far podium. Uh, good luck to everybody. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Academy Award-winning adaptations. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Books that were adapted into Best Picture Oscar winners, Richard. Yeah, on each board, we're looking for the name of six books that were adapted and uh, won Best uh, Picture Oscar. We'll give you the name of the author, two people who starred in the film as well. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our first board of six clues. Here they come. Daphne du Maurier, Joan Fontaine and Judith Anderson, 1941. Sylvia Nassar, Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly, 2002. Thomas Harris, Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins, 1992. Judith Guest, Mary Tyler Moore and Timothy Hutton, 1981. Jules Verne, David Niven and Cantin Flass, 1957. And Michael Ondaatje, Rafe Fiennes and Kristen Scott Thomas, 1997. So, Mark, we're looking for the titles of these books that were adapted into uh, Best Picture Oscar-winning films. Yeah. What are you thinking of going for? I said Jules Verne, David Niven. Uh, I've just, all I've got is something like 10,000 leagues, 10,000 fathoms below sea level. I just have to say that. <laughs> oh, no. OK, 10,000 fathoms <laughs> below sea level, well, says Mark. Um, let's see if that's right for Jules Verne. No. No, I'm afraid not. I think we're going to get to hear that noise quite a lot. I'm afraid <laughs> that's a tough one. A uh, hundred points, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, no, I know the book you're referring to. Uh, you're, you're giving an even more technical title, I think, than, uh, <laughs> yeah. than it has. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, Marissa. Yes. I'm going to go for Thomas Harris, Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins, and say Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Thank you, Marissa. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and that goes down to 58. Well done. <laughs> You're essentially getting the one that everyone at home is going, oh, I can do the Thomas Harris one. I can <laughs> do that one. I can <laughs> do that one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, well done. It's the follow-up to his book, Red Dragon. It won five Oscars. Uh, the movie was first released in the US on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh, that's Silence nice. of the Lambs. Oh, that's lovely. Fun. Look at the relationships that started yeah. with Silence of the Lambs. Very nice. Uh, now then, Alan. Do you yeah. want to talk us through this board? Um, OK. Have a go. So I, th I think the top one is Rebecca. Uh, the Russell Crowe one, I think, is Gladiator. And then the other three, I've got no idea. So, I think I'm going to go for Sylvia Nassar and Gladiator. Gladiator, says Alan. Is that right for that one? Let's find out. Gladiator? No, oh, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. Not Gladiator. That's incorrect. Scores you 100 points. Sorry, that's unlucky. Do you know what that one is? A Beautiful Mind? A Beautiful Mind is the answer, yeah. And that would have scored you nine points. You were right about Rebecca, though. That would have scored you 25 points, would have been a lovely answer. Now, the rest of these, the Jules Verne one, you're thinking of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, but it, it wasn't that, it was... Around the World in 80 Days. Around the World in 80 Days, yeah, that would have scored 23. Uh, the Michael Andarche one... Is uh, The English Patient. The English Patient. That would have scored you 16. And do you know this last one? No. Nope. Well done at home if you said Ordinary People. Ah. Oh. scored two points. Thank you very much indeed. There we go. 
Um, halfway through the round, let's take a look at those scores. Just two scores between the three pairs. Uh, Marissa and David are on 58. Very well done indeed. And then up to 100, which is where we find Alan and Sam and Mark and Jacob. So, yes, Sam and Jacob, it's probably going to be between the pair of you. I'd have thought, I don't know. Let's see what happens in the next <laughs> pass. Good luck to everybody. Yeah, I mean, really good luck to everybody. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Well, the second players, please step up to the podium. OK, we're going to put up six more clues to the titles of books that then were adapted into Oscar-winning films. OK, here they come. We have got Ken Casey, Louise Fletcher and Jack Nicholson, 1976. Cormac McCarthy, Javier Bardem and Tommy Lee Jones, 2008. Mario Puzzo, Marlon Brando and Al Pacino, 1973. Solomon Northup, Chiwetel Ejiofor and Lupita Nyong'o, 2014. Margaret Mitchell, Vivian Lee and Hattie McDaniel, 1940. And John Ball, Sidney Poitier and Rod Steiger, 1968. There we are. Sam. OK. <laughs> um, I think out of all of those, the only one that I have any confidence in is Margaret Mitchell, um, Gone with the Wind. OK, you're going to go for Gone with the Wind for Vivian Lee and Hattie McDaniel. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. There's no red line for you as you are joint high scorers. Gone with the Wind is right. Sam, that's not bad. That's really not bad at all. Down it goes to 25. Best score of the round so far. 125 your total. Yeah, the book was published in 1936, won the Pulitzer Prize. The movie won eight Oscars. Both of those ladies, Vivian Lee and Hattie McDaniel, both won Oscars as well. Mm. That's successful, isn't it? Big old yeah. film. Thank you very much indeed. Now, David, you were on 58. Yes. 66 or less is your target. OK, um, not entirely sure of any of these, but I've got some ideas. Um, I think out of all of them, I'm going to go with the Solomon Northup one as 12 Years a Slave. 12 Years a Slave, says David, for Solomon Northup. Here is your red line. Let's see if we can get you below that with 12 Years a Slave. It's right. You're through. It's another good answer. Oh, look at that, a new low score. Very well done indeed, David. That's eight, takes your total up to 66. Well, I played that film based on Solomon Northup's uh, memoir and Chetel Ejiofor plays Solomon Northup in the film. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Jacob, this board is all yours. Why not have some fun? Talking us through it. I would love to have fun, but I have no idea. Uh, Do I have some guesses? I, I can have a guess. I'll have a guess at Mario Puzo as The Godfather. The Godfather, says Jacob. Here is your red line. Let's see if you can get below that red line with The Godfather. Godfather is right. Ooh, down to 50, but not bad at all. It was right. Takes your total up to 150. Yeah, nice end to the round. And Mario Puzo co-wrote the screenplay as well with Francis Ford Coppola, the director. They won an Oscar for that as well. Uh, the Louise Fletcher Jack Nicholson movie. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Correct. That would have scored you 21. Uh, Cormac McCarthy. Book. No Country for Old Men. Correct. No Country for Old Men would have scored two. And the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah. Better known as a film than a book, I think. In the Heat of the Night. Right. That would have scored 10 points. So the best answer on the board is no country for old men. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of the second round. It means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, Jacob and Mark. Welcome to Pointless. It's been lovely having you here. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Uh, but not a bad performance. That was a really tough first board. Um, no, no shame in scoring 100 on that. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, next time. Jacob and Mark. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Marissa and David, Alan and Sam. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, let's see if we can't chuck some more money into that jackpot by finding a couple of pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many gum trees as they could. Richard. I mean, okay. I thought a gum tree was the thing, but apparently... <laughs> Apparently, there's lots of different types. We're going to show you six different ones up here. There'll be uh, four answers that are real gum trees, two that are red herrings. So you can find the two pointless answers, please. So gum trees or bum trees. Nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, now, uh, so we're looking for the pointless gum trees amongst these six potential 
gum trees. Here we go. Salmon, shark, rainbow, gold sovereign, manna, scribbly. There we are. Oh, this is potluck, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it is just potluck, I, I quite manna like Manna is some kind of food because it was manna from heaven okay. that yeah. they fed. So that's in the, that. Yeah, so. Um, but I don't know. Don't know about the others. I quite like the look of rainbow, potentially yeah. a different colour gum maybe, trees. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's the easy one. Is yeah. scribbly a red herring maybe because of gum when they use it on paper? Maybe, I don't, yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I, don't, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I think we quite liked rainbow. We'll go with rainbow. OK, rainbow. Is rainbow a pointless gum tree? <laughs> well, it's right. Oh, goes down to two. Bad luck. Bad luck. OK, Alan and Sam. Let me see if we can find them. Yeah, uh, we're going to go with manna. Manna? Yeah. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said manna. Is it a pointless gum tree? Manna's right. Oh, no, one! <laughs> well, you didn't find any wrong ones, so there we are. You picked proper gum trees. Uh, that was difficult, wasn't it? But that's, uh, that's part of the fun of that one. You attempted to go for scribbly, uh, and you should have done. It was a pointless answer. Oh, no. um, there is a silver dollar gum tree, but not a gold sovereign gum tree. That is a, uh, that's a red herring. And so salmon or shark, one is a pointless answer, and one of those is incorrect. Well, salmon could be the sort of colour of the thing in a way, whereas shark, I don't see why. I think, yes, yeah, salmon, I could see more of a... OK, let's take a look. Is salmon gum tree the other pointless answer? Yay. Very well done, it is indeed. Uh, there's a gummy shark in Australia, but no shark gum tree. Uh, so that was the other red herring. Well, red shark. Red shark. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, bad luck, we didn't find any pointless answers, but we had a lot of fun learning about gum trees. <laughs> uh, let's play the head-to-head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you are now allowed to confer. Here comes your first question, and it's all about... Places in the Royal Mail's UK A to Z stamp collection. There we are, Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five places that featured on those Royal Mail stamps now. We'll also show you their initials, but what are they, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five places, and here they come. We've got... A, J, B. B, U, C. C, Y, M. D, G, T. And E, I. There we are. OK, Marissa and David, you're our golden couple. You get to go first. Um. Is the Ulster? Yeah. B is I'm Richard. I have no idea. Yeah, that's the most obvious one. Then. Do you go for the right one or? I, I don't know the answer to B. Ulster Castle, is that B? Could be. So I think we only know one for sure. Uh, I think it may be too obvious. So we're going to go for C, York Minster. York Minster. Say, so Marissa and David. Right. Alan and Sam, over to you. Do you want to talk us through that board? OK, so. We think A is Jodrell Bank. B, I would say Ulster Coastline, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, e is Iron Bridge. Uh, I've not got a clue what the other one is. Um, so, we'll go for A. A. so we're going to go for A, Jodrell Bank. Jodrell Bank. So we've got York Minster and Jodrell Bank. Marissa and David have gone for York Minster for C. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. York Minster, absolutely right. <laughs> That takes it down to 52. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alan and Sam have gone for Jodrell Bank for A. Let's see how many of our 100 said Jodrell Bank. Jodrell Bank is right. Win to the point. Very well done indeed. Down it goes to 44. Alan and Sam, after one question, you're up one more. Very well played. Um, let's go through the rest. Now, you see, not Ulster Coastline. I was Scotland. guessing, Uist. Is it? Oh, it's not. Channel? Uist Channel? It is not Uist oh. Channel, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's a castle. Oh, it's the castle, I think. Right, yeah, okay. and it overlooks Loch Ness and it's Urquhart Castle. Urquhart Very well castle. done if you said Urquhart Castle. That would have scored you two points. Do you know what D is? Um, Glastonbury Tour. It is I'm Glastonbury guessing. Tour, yeah. 
We should do a Glastonbury tour at some point. Oh, we must. Um, nine points for that. And the last one is... I, Ironbridge, sorry, Ironbridge. Ironbridge, 37 points. Thanks very much indeed. OK, now, here comes your second question. Ooh, Alan and Sam, you pipped that one, which means, Marissa and David, you now have to win this one. But Alan and Sam get to answer it first, so good luck. Our second question is all about... Concert tours. Richard. Yeah, I'm going to show you now the names of five concert tours. We've missed out one word from each of them. Can you fill in that word, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five concert tours, and here they come. We've got... Elton John, Follow the Blank Brick Road, 2014. Drake, The Boy Meets Blank, 2017. The Rolling Stones, Voodoo Blank, 1994-5. Britney Spears, Blank Fatal, 2011. And David Bowie, Glass Blank, 1987. I'm going to read those all again. Elton John, Follow the Blank Brick Road. Drake, The Boy Meets Blank. The Rolling Stones, Voodoo Blank, Britney Spears, Blank Fatal, and David Bowie, Glass Blank. There we are. Alan and Sam will go first. Okay, so tough one, um, but I think we're going to say Britney Spears and Femme Fatale. OK, femme fatale, say Alan and Sam. Now, uh, Marissa and David, do you want to talk us through that board? Not really. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think Elton John's Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Um, Rolling Stones could be Voodoo Dolls or Voodoo Doll. Um, but I think we quite like Drake's one, don't we? If that's the correct answer, hopefully. The Boy Meets World. The Boy Meets World. OK, so we have got Femme Fatale and The Boy Meets World. Alan and Sam have gone for Femme Fatale for Britney Spears. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. He's right. Goes down to 56. OK, I mean, this one really has to be right. That's what this is hinging on. The Boy Meets World. Shall we find out? Is that right? It is right. And if this beats 56, you are back in the game. And it does. Very well done indeed. Just what we needed from you. 14 is what it scores. And it means after two questions, it's one all. Marissa and David are back in. It's game on. I mean, that, that's what we call relief. <laughs> it's uh, absolutely very well played. Uh, Elton John, you're quite right. Follow the Yellow Brick Road, but 87 points for that. Uh, the Rolling Stones? Lounge. Buju Lounge, yep. And uh, that would have scored 16. And Bowie? Spider. Spider. I, went yeah, to I wasn't see sure if it was Spider or Spiders, but you're quite uh, right at Spider. Well, I went to see it at the old Roker Park. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Um, 11 points for Glass Spider. That's the best answer on the board. Very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, it all comes down to the third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this one goes through to the jackpot round and uh, plays for that. So best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about US presidents, Richard. Yep, we're going to show you five pairs of US presidents now. We'd like you to tell us which presidents served their term in between these pairs, please. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five pairs, and here they come. We are looking for the in-between president between Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, Jimmy Carter, George H.W. Bush, Lyndon B. Johnson, Gerald Ford, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush. Harry S. Truman, John F. Kennedy. I'm going to read those all again. Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson. Jimmy Carter, George H.W. Bush. Lyndon B. Johnson, Gerald Ford. George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush. Harry S. Truman, John F. Kennedy. There we are. OK, Marissa and David will go first. I'm not sure if any of the others. At the bottom, I might be Reagan, but I'm not sure. Or Nixon. Uh, can, we, can, we not play, sure. can we play it the same? Uh, I think we're going to go second one up from the bottom and say Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton between uh, the bushes. Bill Clinton. Uh, Alan and Sam, do you want to talk us through that board? OK, so I'm going to kick myself and my history teacher will probably rinse me for it, but I can't name the top one or the second one. Uh, the one between Johnson and Ford is Richard Nixon, and then between uh, Truman and Kennedy is Dwight Eisenhower. 
Uh, I think we're going to go for... We'll go with Richard Nixon between Johnson and Ford. OK, you're going to go for Richard Nixon. So we've got Bill Clinton and Richard Nixon. Marissa and David have gone for Bill Clinton. Let's see if that is right between the bushes. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Bill Clinton. It is right. That goes down to 41. Meanwhile, Alan and Sam have gone for Richard Nixon between Lyndon B. Johnson and Gerald Ford. Let's see if that is right. How many of our 100 people said it? It is Richard Nixon. And that wins the point for you. Very well done indeed. That goes down to 16, and it means Alan and Sam, after three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Yeah, it looks to me like your teachers did a pretty good job. I imagine they'll be, uh, I imagine they'll be fairly chuffed. Don't worry. Um, and you were absolutely right about Eisenhower as well. And it's an even better scorer. Eisenhower would have scored you 11. Uh, Carter and Bush between them. Uh, Ronald Reagan. Reagan, yep. He would have scored you 34. This is the best answer on the board by some way. Very well done at home. If you knew William Taft, Taft was the answer. Would have scored four points. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, Marissa and David, this is where we finally say goodbye to you as well. You've done so well across the show. Um, but anyway, well done. It's been great having you on. Thank you so much, Marissa and David. But for Alan and Sam, it's now time for the pointless final. Congratulations, Alan and Sam. You have seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,000. Well, you've made it this far. You triumph to one. Here you are in the final on your uh, second show. Um, what do you want to see come up this round? Oof, sport. We're really pretty good. Uh, 80s. Yeah, music. Okay. Sport, 80s, music. Yeah. That kind of thing. Well, let's see. Four things will appear, as ever. Let's hope something here tickles your fancy. We've got... Cornish art and entertainment, things containing the letter P, friends, Romans and countrymen, and chart-topping singers without their number one hits. What do we think? Uh, bottom one, yeah. <laughs> bottom one, yeah. yeah. Do you think? Well, uh, yeah, I don't know if you know any Cornish art or entertainment. Loads. Um, yeah, we'll go with the bottom one. Okay, we'll yeah. go with chart-topping singers without their number one hits. There you go. OK, very best of luck. Up to the beginning of October 2020, according to the official charts company, we are looking for any UK Top 40 hit by Madonna, which did not reach number one, any Top 40 hit by Elvis, which didn't reach number one, or any Top 40 hit by Cliff Richard that did not reach number one. So uh, any Top 40 hit that didn't reach number one by Madonna, Elvis and Cliff. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yeah, cool. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, oh, so God. Elvis Presley. Yeah. You've got Kissing Cousins. Yeah. You've got um, Roustabout. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Madonna Borderline. Yeah. Or um, um, Papa Don't Preach. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Cliff bad, Richard, bad, I only know, like, the really... Obvious like, ones. Summer Holiday and Living yeah. Doll and... Oh, well... Oh, it... um, Daddy's Home. My, I don't know. Um, I don't know. So I'm going to go for Elvis. I'm going to go for... Okay. Um, well, if, oh. it, if it helps with Madonna, um, like, Papa Don't Preach, like, I'm pretty sure I know that one, so I don't think okay. it would be... So I'm going to do Raps About. Uh-huh. Kissing Cousins. OK. Love Me Tender was another Elvis one. I'm not sure if that was okay. quite, um, well, number one. Seconds, got time. Uh, Madonna, Borderline. Um, Ten seconds girl? left. Maybe Who's That Girl, because that was a film. Madonna, yeah. Or okay. Evita, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina was Madonna as well. OK. OK, so I've got, yep. yeah. OK, that's your time up. Sounds like you've got tons of answers. Let's have three. OK, so we're going to do Elvis Presley, um, Kissing Cousins. Kissing Cousins. And um, Roust About. Roust About. And um, Madonna, we're going to go with Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Uh, Roust About. Roust About goes last. Least likely to be pointless? Madonna. Madonna, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Yeah. And then Kissing Cousins goes in the middle. Yeah. Cool. Lovely. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order. And here they are. We have got Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, Kissing Cousins, 
and Roustabout. Well, there we are, three good answers. Uh, if one of these wins that jackpot for you, £1,000, that's quite a nice thing to be taking back with you to Manchester. What would you like to do with it? Alan, I'm going to ask you first. Um, I'd like to like save up for a trip into Europe, maybe like travel through a few countries. So yeah. Very nice indeed. Sam, how about you? Um, I need a car, so it'll go towards a car. Go towards a car. Very yeah. good. OK, well, let's hope one of these does it for you. Don't cry for me, Argentina is your first submission. We're looking for Madonna top 40 singles that didn't make number one in this case. Let's see how many of our 100 people said, don't cry for me, Argentina. Is it pointless? Well, there's a thousand pounds riding on this. If this goes all the way down to zero, that jackpot is yours. Don't cry for me, Argentina goes down through the 20s, through the teens, into single figures, still going down, still going down the dial to two. OK, let's not dwell on that. Let's move to your next answer, Kiss and Cousins. We now move to Elvis' top 40 singles that didn't make number one. Kiss and Cousins, if it's pointless, wins you £1,000. How many people said it? Well, it's right. Don't cry for me, Argentina was your first answer, and that took us all the way down to two. Kiss and Cousins now takes us down through the teens, into single figures, still going down, still going down, still getting down. Very well done indeed. Congratulations, there's a trip through Europe, there's a something towards a car. Uh, Kiss and Cousins was a pointless answer. You are taking home today's jackpot of £1,000. Well done. Brilliantly done. That's four wins in a row we've had now. Yeah. Very, oh. very impressive stuff. Roustabout, if you've gone on to that, was not released as a single oh. from the movie Roustabout, so, but who cares, right? <laughs> who cares, because yeah. Kiss and Cousins won either money. Um, let's have a little look at Madonna, shall we? Some big songs here, which would have won the money as well. American Life, Bedtime Story, Erotica, Lucky Star is a pointless answer. Don't Cry For Me, Argentina wasn't a pointless answer, but Another Suitcase in Another Hall, that was oh. a pointless answer. Dear Jesse, Express Yourself, Gambler, Hanky Panky, Human Nature, Open Your Heart, This Used To Be My Playground, lots of good pointless answers there. Uh, Elvis now. Let me be your teddy bear is a pointless answer. Blue River, stuck on you, there goes my everything. Big hunk of love, if I can dream. King Creole, Lordy Miss Claudy, the 12th of Never. Some lovely answers there for Elvis. Uh, and Cliff, now, all of these were number two singles. All four of these, fall in love with you. It's all in the game, the best of me, wind me up, let me go. All the Cliffy answers were uh, pointless, apart from Devil Woman, Wired for Sound, Carrie, Big Ship, Daddy's Home, Marianne, Miss Unites, My Pretty One from the Day I Met Marie. Some people and how to all our friends. Everything else is a pointless answer, so very well done if you got one. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thanks once again to our winning players, Alan and Sam, who take away today's jackpot of £1,000. Well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>